Welcome to Greek Heroes, where we look at how the heroes of Greek literature have been represented in popular culture through time. Tonight's special guest is Achilles. Being the star of the Trojan War meant that I was quite a big name in ancient Greece. But since then, my star hasn't always burned so brightly. Because in the Iliad, my whole story hinges on my love for a man. That's Patroclus and me in the tent. I'm tending to his wounds, poor love. Oh, if canvas could talk. You have to remember, in ancient Greece, it was so much more normal for a man to love another man. I mean... I had a wife, you know, Briseis. Well, she was more of a war prize. But even if Homer only hinted at my sexuality in the Iliad, by the time Aeschylus wrote about me in Mare Madonis, there was very little doubt about my true feelings for Pat. Times change, though. And in every era, my portrayal seems to get loaded with everyone else's baggage about human sexuality. Old Rubens was a sweetie. He couldn't resist a scene of me dressed in women's clothes. Those Baroque artists really go for a bit of flowing fabric, don't they? I'm not denying the events happened, but did he really have to play up to the stereotype? They really weren't that happy about men like me in 50s America, I can tell you that. I mean, just look at how they treated me in Helen of Troy. That's me there. I'm virtually a pantomime villain. And I despise you. And you, Agamemnon. What with Rubens making me widow twanky, I'm not sure which hurts more. Things got interesting when uh, Marvel decided to turn me into a proper hero again. Americans weren't ready to go too deeply into my story, so what they ended up with was a dull old soldier with a dodgy heel. Nothing interesting about me at all. And my sexuality was very much don't ask, don't tell. Now... By the 1990s, things had really changed. Britain's Channel 4 was about as liberated as it gets. I mean, it's wonderful to be out of the closet, but this lot's so far out they've forgotten all their clothes. I can assure you, in the Trojan War, we were dressed at least some of the time. Now, Hollywood is always after bigger, better spectacles, and 2004 brought two epic tales to the screen. Even in the time of Alexander the Great, his relationship with Hephaestion was compared with Patroclus and I. In Stone's version, the gay love story leads directly to the climax, which is pretty wonderful. Or it would have been if the film hadn't bombed at the box office. It's you I love. Maybe America still wasn't ready for gay heroes. This was before Brokeback Mountain, of course. Troy felt like the Marvel experience all over again, I'm afraid. They glossed over everything. Went for the old story that Patroclus was my cousin. Instead of a tragic hero driven by love and revenge, my entire story seems to be based on vanity. I mean, if I've got a weakness, it's my heel, not my ego. Still... It's nice to be the leading man. They will write stories about your victories for thousands of years. I just wonder if there will ever be a time when people see my brief, glorious story as the Greeks did. Until then, though, we'll just have to make do with watching Brad up there, won't we, Pat? Oh, Pat. We were buried together, you know. Lovely. (laughs) 